your piano teacher Tim here and today I'm going to show you the fastest possible way to read music. I want to quickly mention that before you can understand the technique that we're going to be talking about today, you first have to understand two things. One, how to read notes using the lines and spaces on the staff for the treble clef and the bass clef. You also have to know about intervals and how to use those to read notes faster. I'm going to quickly walk you through and catch you up if you don't know about that stuff. But if you do know all this, these basics already, skip to here in the video. I'm going to put a timestamp for you um, to the technique we're going to talk about today. Okay, so you have to know about how to read notes on both the treble clef and the bass clef. Now, most of the time, the treble clef is going to be played with your right hand, bass clef played with your left hand. And um, as you can see here, the staff is made up of five lines and four spaces in between those lines. And as you can see, I have a note here on each of the lines right here. Um, the lines of the treble clef are as follows, E, G, B, D, and F. You can also use a saying to come up um, to remember all of these. So you can use like, every good boy deserves fries or something, so long as the first letters of the saying match up. The spaces of the treble clef are as follows. They spell the word face. Now when you're doing these and you're figuring these out, please, please, please remember to go from the bottom of the staff to the top of the staff. If you do it the other way, you're going to get the notes wrong every time. So E, G, B, D, and F for the lines F, A, C, E spaces. All right, let's get on to the bass clef. Lines of the bass clef, pretty simple, are G, B, D, F and A, or great big dogs fight animals. Spaces of the bass clef are all cows eat grass, or A, C, E, G. Okay, you're going to have to become familiar with these. Spend some time on this part of the lesson uh, memorizing the lines of spaces for each clef, because now what we're going to talk about are intervals. An interval is the distance between two notes and you can use them to read notes way faster. So if you have a note, say that F there, and then you have another note, this is what's called a unison. These are literally the same note. And unfortunately on a piano with only one piano, you can't even play a unison because you can only hit one key down once at a time, but just to let you know that. And then um, the intervals go from there onto what's called a second, meaning just that they're two notes apart. Let me show you here with the piano in here. So you have F and G, that is a second. And one thing I wanna show you about seconds, let me draw it like this, is that seconds are so close together that they have to be stacked side by side. They're still like kinda of on top of one another, but from left to right a little bit because otherwise they'd be colliding with one another. One thing I wanna mention is um, intervals go from seconds up to what we call octaves, which are eighths and actually beyond. Um, but you want to become familiar with up to an octave. All even number intervals don't match. And what I mean by this is if one of the notes is a space, the other one's a line. So if I have like this, I know that, and we moved a little further apart, notice how they move from side to side to more of a vertical stance here. Um, and they don't, they can appear differently, I'll show you in a minute. But this is an even number interval, just identifying it by sight right away, because this is a space and this is a line. Is it now an even number interval? No, they're both lines. So even numbers, they do not match. Odd number intervals, however, they do match, meaning if this is a space, this is a space. If this one's a line, this one's gonna be a line. It doesn't matter whether it's right here, here, or even here, you know that that's some kind of odd number interval. So use that to your advantage. Seconds are really easy to identify because they're right in, you know, next to each other like I mentioned. Thirds are easy to identify because it looks like the beginning of a snowman kind of thing, evenly stacked. And it doesn't matter where they are on the staff or even off the staff. Um, if it's stacked like that, it's always a third. And that just means that they, these notes are three notes away. One, two, three, just like that. Fourth, they don't match. 
and you have a little bit of a space in between here but not too large and you know it's not a second because they're not smushed together they're a little bit further they're four notes away one two three four just like that so memorize where all these are fifths are always like this where they have you know they're evenly stacked but there's always like an empty space or an empty line in the middle so you know if this one starts on a line that one's going to be on a line because it's an odd number interval five and there's going to be an empty line there so that's how you find you know fifths by the way these are the same with treble clef and bass clef so i'm only going to show you on treble clef this interval what do you think it is well it has to be an even number right because they don't match and it's one two three four five six notes away right there so that's a sixth it's kind of like a fourth because a fourth was here remember but a little bit further apart and then sevenths, they match, right? But they're pretty far apart. You actually have either two lines that are empty or two spaces that are empty, depending on where these bad boys fall. So if it falls here, you know that that's a seventh right away. And then, like I said, you wanna learn up to an octave, which is the same note again, just an octave apart, eight notes apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. And in this case, you want to count the note you're starting with and the ending note to make sure you get there. So that's an octave right away. So this is all the basics you need to know to know this next part, which is the main part of this lesson. Okay, now the reason we're here today is to build on this. And today we're going to talk about the secret, which I call interval clusters or just note clusters because they're not always intervals. And I'll explain here in a second. So say we have something complicated like this, where you have four notes. Um, now you could individually read each note, and be like, okay, that's an E, the next one's an F, oh, the next one's a B, the next one's a D. Well, especially if you're not used to reading the notes up and down on the staff really fast, it's gonna take you way longer than if you do this. Okay, here's a cluster. That's an interval, right? That's a second right there. What about these bad boys? That's clearly a third. And then like, what about the distance between like here and that note there? Well, that's gonna be, uh, let's see, there's a space here, there's a line there, that's gonna be a fourth. Now, at first it's gonna take you a bit longer, but trust me on this, when you get super good at intervals, you're gonna know, be able to read these super duper fast. So here, let me change it back to the piano view here. Um, here you have a, you know, your bottom note E. I would read that note just by itself. You know, there's a second there, a fourth, one, two, three, four, four notes away, and then a third stacked on top of there. And it sounds absolutely dreadful because that's not a real chord. Just kind of showing you as an example. Clusters are also useful in reading notes that are way up off the staff. Like, what in the world is this note way up here? Now you could, if you could memorize your ledger lines, which I kind of recommend you do anyway. But what you can do is you can say, okay, the distance between these two is a third, and then the distance between these two is a fifth because they match just like that. You read the bottom note D, and then you know it's a third above, and then a fifth above, meaning that note up there is C. Clusters aren't just intervals. And what I mean by that, and what I recommend you do is really learn about your major, minor, diminished and augmented chords because what's going to happen is eventually you're going to read that and you could say okay those are stacks of thirds and that's fine or you can if you're so good at chords you can say okay that's an f major chord and i know exactly where to play that so in context of a piece which i'll show you here in a minute as an example you're going to be able to pick those out and read those no problem now chords don't always appear like that they can appear maybe something like this um let me get something in here for us they can appear something like this where you have the bottom note of the chord and then the top notes of the chord just like that they can even appear one note at a time called an arpeggio so something like this just like that or you can read them as thirds going from a left to right but it is easier if you learn how to identify not only the intervals chords and then also what i'm going to show you right now 
which are scales. Now, teachers torture students with scales all the time, but it isn't meant to be torture. It is actually has a very good um, reason behind why we make you learn your scales. And one of the reasons is that if you get really good at scales, you can learn to identify them by sight. It's not the only reason. There's actually a lot of other good reasons. Um, one has to do with being able to figure out you know, the notes that belong in a key. But anyway, if I see this pattern of notes here, sure, I could individually read each note, um, or I could determine what the you know, intervals are, things like that. But if I can see it and identify it right away, I know that's a C major scale. And if I'm used to playing the scale, I also know the correct finger pattern to use to play up and down the keyboard effectively. Let me show you a couple of uh, like real examples in real sheet music. Okay, so this is a selection from the Pathétique Sonata. And as you can see, things are getting pretty hairy here in this first measure. Like what in the world is going on with that right hand? What in the world is going on with the left hand down here? Well, let's use our technique, shall we, to kind of figure out what in the world is going on. Well, first things first is we probably know what that top note is in the treble clef, and you probably know that as F, hopefully. Now, the question is, like, what, what is this note right here? Well, that note, think about it for a second, they don't match, right? So it's an even number interval of some type. And here's a little pro tip for you. If you have a note, um, one note and then the next note goes way up off the staff 99% of the time it's an octave now you you want to check um, to make sure but most of the time it's an octave and, and I know it's an octave because I can identify these from sight um, and they also don't match meaning that it's an even number interval so I know that these are, this is actually kind of a scale pattern, um, kind of in like an F minor, or maybe even a part of an A flat major scale pattern coming down an octave. If you like this lesson, make sure you smash that like button. It lets other students know this is a quality lesson that they can learn from as well. In terms of what you should watch next on YouTube, if you felt like I went really fast through the beginning topics today, which I kind of did, because I wanted to get to the meat of the lesson. Um, check out this playlist here where I have some lessons where I go through the beginner stuff a little bit slower, how to read notes on the staff a bit slower, how to do the intervals a bit slower.